All right, everyone, here is a lecture about complex traits. So everything, once it goes, come on. Okay, everything that we've done so far is about principles of dominance, okay? So all that says is that, um, when a, that some traits are other traits, and this is, we also call this Mendelian genetics, which adheres to the principles of dominance. So looking at this picture, we have these weird things with wings. If I have a homozygous dominant, big B, big B, big B obviously stands for yellow. A heterozygous, the big B is going to cover up the little B, and I'm still going to have a yellow whatever. And if I'm homozygous recessive, little b, little b, that is the only opportunity where the white recessive trait can shine through. So everything that we've done so far with Punnett squares have been Mendelian genetics, but because you guys are awesome, I'm going to throw a wrench into the mix. So my thing isn't big enough. Don't worry. I'll move it. So a dominant trait will mask or hide a recessive trait. So here's a practice problem. So if I have a homozygous black chicken and a homozygous white rooster, tell me about their babies, given that black color is dominant over white. Pause the video, try it yourself, pick a good letter for your allele. So like, don't pick C, okay? Because I can't tell the difference between a big C and a little C. Maybe try the letter B or something. Pause the video. So here is my example. So you should have done a big, big, in this case I use G's, and a little, little. All of the babies are going to be heterozygous, meaning they have a big and a little, little letter. So because I'm adhering to the principle of dominance, the big is going to cover up the little, the black is going to cover up the white, and I'm going to get a black chicken. Disclaimer, I don't actually know how chicken's color is inherited, but this makes a dang good example, so just hang with me here. So the first, there are going to be a total of three ways that genes can be inherited. Actually, it's three in addition to Mendelian. So you've already talked about Mendelian. That was the Harry Potter lecture. Then I'm going to talk to you about incomplete dominance, co-dominance, and then sex-linked. Sex-linked is going to be a whole other lecture just because it's muy importante and you do things a little bit differently. So after this lecture, you're going to know these first three ways. So incomplete dominance is when the trait is not completely dominant over another. Incomplete, meaning it kind of shines through. So if you have an incomplete on an assignment, you didn't finish it, but you did start it. So in this case, I think of it as like a blending. So like a red and a white make a pink. Learn your color wheels, friends. What do blue and yellow make? What do orange, or not orange, what do blue and red make? Learn your color wheel, because we're going to be using a lot of examples. This is actually not a lie. Carnations do have incomplete dominance when doing their flower petal color, so that's not a lie. So here's another practice problem. So if black feathers is incompletely dominant over white, cross a homozygous black with a homozygous white. Pause the video. Do it. You should have gotten, oopsie, you should have gotten 100% homozygous or heterozygous, excuse me, but you just interpret it differently. So for both your Mendelian and your incomplete dominant examples, you should have the same type of Punnett square. So it should keep looking like this, but we're going to interpret it differently. So instead of the big completely covering the little, it's going to be a mixture of the two. So in this case, if I have black and white, that is going to make gray. So a gray color chicken. I would highly recommend drawing some chickens or something in your notes so that way you can identify what is Mendelian, what is incomplete dominance, and what is uh, co-dominant, which is next. So co-dominance has that co-prefix, 
think cooperation or co-worker or uh miss bow what's another co-word cooperate co-worker comorbid comorbid whatever that means um so both are going to contribute to the phenotype of the offspring so in this case instead of having red and white make pink i have red and white splotchiness so i think of this one as being splotchy because neither one is recessive if you look at this punnett square you will notice that i have two capital letters here they use r for maybe red and w for white i should not have any lowercase level letters um i believe this is a python that does uh operate through codominance but I was told a couple years ago that this is a lie. Um, horses, specifically paint horses, are not, do not operate through codominance, but hey, it's a heck of a good example. So let's do a practice problem. If black feathers is codominant with white, cross a homozygous black with a homozygous white. Okay? Do the Punnett squared and try to interpret it. What do the babies look like? In this case, you should have gotten a black and white because the black does not cover up the white and vice versa. They are both dominant. They are both equals. So I should have a striped polka dot splotchy black and white colored chicken. So it's very, very important that you know the difference between these three things. I would maybe do some practice problems. I would make some flashcards. Make sure you are solid. Um, let me know if you have any questions.